Now, do slask on Corla, boilum glue forty octus, August glue forty oxen, fain leru le winter in the Hukronia. Ni fagele ania will massa gwen er on Sirsha, August er canasoct, August er fain kinu, Ak bratnu le hufos, er gnever in Arusha, August a canara Vladimir Putin. Neil a lehead fecha agging si Europe la heart, er kerascor blain anus. Taken winter ne heron on chunker a will, er unra actranok, agus shasimid lesh on ukron egon tro sho. Ni hogan gniver in arusha, ak boss, agus scris de hear broju. I want to start last count quilla by extending again my solidarity and the solidarity of all of us in Sinn Féin to the people of Ukraine. All of us who value freedom, sovereignty and the right to self-determination of free peoples can only look in horror at the actions of the Russian Federation and its leader, Vladimir Putin, in embarking on the type of invasion that we have not seen in Europe for decades. Ireland, more than most, knows and understands the impact of occupation and imperialist aggression. And we stand with Ukraine as they face down the tyranny of empire. The actions of Russia bring nothing but death and destruction to a proud country. They are acts that we have regrettably witnessed around the world in modern times in Iraq, in Afghanistan, Afghanistan in Palestine. They are acts that have no place in the 21st century period, irrespective of who the aggressor is. The Charter of the United Nations, the cornerstone of modern international law, prohibits the use of force against the territorial integrity or political independence of any state. That must be our starting point and our ending point. And it must be the goal of the international community through diplomacy to bring about a peaceful resolution to stop this war and to stop all wars. James Connolly wrote that there are no humane methods of warfare. There is no such thing as civilised warfare. All warfare is inhuman. All warfare is barbaric. The first blast of the bugles of war ever sounds, for the time being, the funeral knell of human progress. And he wasn't wrong. But there is a way out of this. I believe that, as with any conflict, the way out of this is through politics, through dialogue. By dint of our military neutrality, our history of conflict resolution, and our seat on the UN Security Council, and particularly, let it be said, as the only European member of the Security Council that is not also a member of NATO. Because of this, Ireland is uniquely placed in Europe to put the case for an intensification of efforts to find a peaceful pathway forward. As a military neutral, as a country that is committed to the rule of law, to the success of multilateralism, to democracy, to dialogue, I believe we can play a proactive role in the response of the international community at large. So we must step up our supports for those in need of humanitarian aid and our support for those displaced by this conflict. And I have no doubt that we will play our full part in accommodating those fleeing Ukraine as part of a comprehensive Europe-wide and indeed global response. I also hope that Ukrainian membership of the European Union can be expedited in line with the motion passed overwhelmingly today by the European Parliament. I also, Kian Korla, want to acknowledge the very, very many people in Russia who don't want this war. We send them our solidarity as they bravely protest the unjust actions of their leaders. And we should acknowledge that this is not an easy thing. In fact, this is a most courageous thing to do in a country that has a dismal human rights record. 
You see, it's ordinary people who will feel the heavy impact of economic sanctions, even when they are correctly targeted predominantly at Russian oligarchs and big business. Those sanctions are, I believe, an absolutely essential part of the diplomatic effort to make the Russian leadership realise the futility of their actions in invading Ukraine. Vladimir Putin can, even at this late juncture, accept that his actions are entirely unjust and that they are contrary to international law and that he can end this barbarism. As we move forward from here, there's an onus and responsibility on us to renew and step up our proud efforts as a state to advance the cause of international nuclear disarmament. Indeed, it should be remembered that Ireland was the first country to sign the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons in 1968. And statements and events of recent days serve to remind us that we are never more than minutes away from a chain reaction of missile strikes that threaten the very existence of humankind. And for that reason, last count, Corla, all nuclear weapons, all nuclear weapons held by all actors must be put beyond use, and new measures it put in place to ensure that they can never be produced again. In conclusion, Count Corla, let me state again that we here in Ireland stand with the global community and oppose and condemn Russia's actions, that we support Ukraine's right to territorial integrity, its internationally recognised borders, and we recognise above all else the rights of Ukrainian women, men, children, to their safety and to their homeland. There can be no tolerance for the type of aggression we have seen by a very large, very powerful state against its smaller neighbour. It is this, this aggression is entirely unacceptable to all of us, to all of us in this House, to the Irish people, to the international community, and I therefore commend and I support the motion before us this afternoon. Thanks, last call, Carla. Um, today, as they have been for the last week, our thoughts and prayers are with the people of Ukraine as an aggressive, brutal invasion of their territory takes place and the missiles continue to fall. And from the outset, I want to completely and utterly condemn the actions by the Russian Federation. I also want to send a message of solidarity to the many Ukrainian people who have come to Ireland to find a new home, and we share their pain at what is happening in their homeland. Hour by hour, we witness incredible courage and sacrifice by the Ukrainian people in the face of increasingly overwhelming odds at the Russian war machine as it gears up to escalate the conflict. We have also witnessed many Ukrainian na nationals whose sense of duty led them to leave the safety of Ireland, to put themselves in harm's way to defend their native land. And I want to also salute their courage. The arrogance, disdain and dismissiveness of Vladimir Putin for the sovereign rights of the people of Ukraine is an affront to the UN Charter, democracy, decency and to international law. Such is the widespread resolve provoked by Russian aggression amongst democratic nations that there is an appetite to eat the cost of sanctions against Russia. Whatever that cost may turn out to be, Russia has attacked a sovereign state. It has brought war to Europe for the first time since the Second World War. It has performed an unthinkable act. Over half, a, over half a million Ukrainian refugees have attempted to flee the Russian invasion, and some of these will unfortunately and undoubtedly have to make their way to our shores for their protection, fleeing from this 
aggression, where I have no doubt that the Irish nation will welcome them with open arms. I also want to commend the efforts of the Irish diplomatic staff and the NGO personnel working on the ground in very trying circumstances. I want to ask the Minister if he could update the House on their safety and their well-being at this difficult time. A dire humanitarian crisis is developing. It is imperative that we do everything in our power to contribute to the wider humanitarian effort. This should also include the opening of a humanitarian, humanitarian corridor to allow full access for NGOs into Ukraine itself. There is no doubt that Putin's actions represent a threat to the rules-based international order. The Russian assault on Ukraine represents a pivot point in history. The ripple effects of the attack and the international response will impact on geopolitical and economic affairs for some time to come. Sinn Féin have been consistent from the outset of this crisis in our adherence to the principles inherent in the United Nations Resolution 68 262, adopted by the General Assembly on the 27th of March 2014 in relation to the territorial integrity of Ukraine. And this UN resolution specifically calls on all states to refrain in their international relations from the threat or use of force against the territorial integrity or political independence of any state and to settle their international disputes by peaceful means. And as this motion here today references, I want to add my voice to, the further urge, to further urge Russia to withdraw its military forces and to return to discussions within the Normandy format. I have repeatedly called for the full implementation of the Minsk agreements endorsed by the Security Council in the UN Security Council Resolution 2202 in 2015 and do so again here today. We believe that efforts must remain focused to establish this resolution as a reality. The democratic nations of the world are united in their outrage against the Russian aggression. And Sinn Féin supports the continuing imposition of sanctions against Russia as part of an international response designed to bring an end to Russian aggression. And every effort must be expended in order to bring an end to the conflict. Unfortunately, this conflict is set to get worse if the current trend continues. The likelihood is that the Russians will get more ruthless. There are going to be a lot more people killed in the coming days. And we cannot just sit down and accept that politics has failed. To do so will be to force to observe even more unspeakable suffering. We in Ireland, along with the, in, the wider international community, have a moral obligation to the people of Ukraine to bring every diplomatic pressure to bear on Russia, to pursue every avenue to bring this crisis to an end. For if we don't, we will be talking of Ukraine in the same breath as Syria, Lebanon or Yemen, to name but a few. Here in Ireland, for close to two years, Sinn Féin have been pushing to close off access to Section one, 110 funds for use by the Russian war machine and oligarchs. And my colleague Mairead Farrell has raised this in issue in the Dáil several occasions, Minister. First with Minister James Brown and then more importantly with Minister Pascal Donoghue. Mairead followed this up with a letter to Minister Donoghue about the issue and unfortunately no response was forthcoming. The Government has refused to address the connection of the IFSC to Russia, and that is totally unacceptable. And hopefully, Minister, you will be able to inform the House here today as to whether the sanctions that have been imposed by the EU will finally address this and cut off the €118 billion Euro in funds that has been washed through the IFSC. Minister Sinn Féin has called for the expulsion of the Russian ambassador to Ireland, Yuri Filatov. The government has offered a, a rationale for its decision to demur on this for the time being. And the minister yourself, you've talked of the importance of Ireland in unison with our European partners. And Ireland is a member of the United Nations Security Council. 
It secured election to that position predominantly through the votes of many of the non-aligned nations of the world. And we sit on the UN Security Council through the gift of non-aligned nations. They look to us to provide leadership, to act in the interests of and to be the dissenting voice of power of the less powerful. Hence, for Ireland to act unilaterally in expelling the Russian ambassador, it would not be an act of a lone nation. It would be the action of a nation that has been tasked with providing leadership and example to the nations who have tasked our state with giving voice to the countries who remain outside the power blocks of the various military alliances. So, again, I would urge you, Minister, that when Ireland acts alone, when Ireland takes a moral stand, when Ireland pursues mechanisms designed to exercise diplomatic action in the pursuit of ending violence, our country needs to send a powerful message. It provides, needs to provide leadership and it needs to provide an example to those non-aligned countries who have placed our country on the UN Security Council. It is our non-aligned status that provides us with the global footprint and soft power beyond anything we could hope to achieve by waiting to follow the examples of alliances. We can never give up in our attempts to achieve a peaceful solution to any conflict. And in this instance, I believe that the UN still has a massive role to play in this. And we will continue to call for a, a de-escalation, for dialogue and for the UN to have a greater say in attempts to bring an end to the conflict. And Minister, I'm aware that talks again are due to take place this Wednesday between Ukraine and Russia. And there must be an immediate ceasefire, the withdrawal of Russian troops immediately and the territorial integrity of Ukraine must fully be respected. The same breath calling us to expel the Russian ambassador. He absolutely it's can. completely contradictory. It's called leadership, Minister.